future badass business owners. Welcome back to the Start a Small Business podcast, where each episode I'll be walking you through the process of setting up your small business and going from concept to open for business. In our next couple of episodes, we're going to be doing two parts on research. Today, we're going to mainly focus on researching your competition. But first, I want to talk about the role of research in your new business overall. Please know that research is probably going to be the most important thing you do to ensure your business's success. Now, I can hear all the type A personalities already hating this step. Let's face it, you want to just jump in and start running. It's what you do. You like to kick butt and take names. But you need to slow down, Turbo. Jumping in without doing your research will cost you tons of money and lots of needless mistakes. So why is research so important? Because it helps you discover who your target customer is so you don't waste time and energy on those who you have no business chasing. You need to understand their primary needs as well. Research is also good for preventing you from getting fines because you're doing things wrong. And good research is going to save you time and money and can shave years off of your learning curve by keeping you from making mistakes that come at a price that could cost you a lot of money. Way too many people start a business only to wish they would have slowed down in the beginning and set the business up correctly to begin with. We learn from our mistakes, but you don't need to touch a hot stove when you're 99% sure you're going to get burned. Wouldn't you rather move on and make new mistakes versus stupid ones that were preventable? Now, to help you out over the next couple of episodes, there's also going to be a cheat sheet in the show notes that you can download that will serve as a reminder of many of the items that we're going to be discussing. So in the next episode, we'll dive into the legal stuff like business plans, LLCs, doing businesses, insurance, and a host of other things. But in this episode, we're going to focus really in on your competitors and what they're doing right. And yes, you did hear me correctly. I didn't say what they are doing wrong, but what they're doing right. It's easy to criticize another business. It's difficult to study when someone else is doing really well. Now, don't get me wrong. We want to capture what they are messing up on, but I don't want you to miss out on the good stuff. Your mission is to gather intel. This way you can shoot from the gate with a bang and your competitors are a wealth of good information for you. When we think of the word competitors, we tend to automatically jump to how we are better than they are, or in this case, how much better you plan to be. We think there is no way we will make the same mistakes they have. Please don't be arrogant and think like this. Be open to learning from them. You will be glad you did. Trust me, I've been there. I worked for a company where we loved tearing apart our competitors and to point out what they were doing wrong. It wasn't until we realized that they were better than us at some things and we needed to study them more that we finally took off on certain areas of our business. When we finally started to study what they got right, we improved and our profits went up as well. See, you need to fight your natural inclination to pick on what somebody's doing wrong. We've been trained since we were young to pick on our competition, but you can't assume that because they aren't meeting the standards you think they should, that you can just dismiss them. Let's face it, they are in business for a reason. Your goal is to find out why people continue to use them. Maybe they are the only game in town. Maybe they have poor service yet have amazing quality of work, so people are willing to overlook their weaknesses. Maybe it's the opposite. Maybe they do horrible work, but people love them and they have great customer service, so people are more forgiving. Or it could be that they've been around so long people don't know any reason why not to use them because their papa used them, their grandpa used them, all the way down the line. Or it could simply be that the community isn't even aware that there are other options in town for them to use. Don't get me wrong. Knowing what they are doing poorly is great for you. You can take these areas and leverage them in your business. If they are really bad at customer service, then you can set your bar so high it really stands out. If they do poor quality work, then you can make sure that your work is superior to anyone else's. It is just as critical that you study what they're doing well and what they're doing fantastic at because you're going to have to have your bar set at that same level Just like I said earlier, there's a reason they are in business. Your goal is to find out why. Talk to others. Why do they use them? What has been their experience using that business? Maybe they do a great job targeting a certain type of customer. Maybe they have figured out how to be profitable in a certain lane and they just stick to it. Like they really have focused in on one aspect of what it is that they do and they have really said this is going to be our lane. 
We call this understanding their ideal customer. Maybe they understand this better than most other companies do. Now we will discuss your ideal customer a little bit further in a later episode because this is a critical piece of your particular plan. Now we just covered a lot, so let's pause for a moment and pull out the areas you wanna dive into. What does their customer service look like? How about the quality of their work? How are they marketing? Who do they market to? How do the locals even know about them? How have they branded themselves? Now keep in mind, branding is what people say about them versus their marketing materials. And we're gonna talk about this a little bit more in an upcoming episode. How do they currently get their customers? How do they treat their customers? These are just a few of the examples that you want to explore when looking at your competition. The key is to learn everything you can, both good and bad. What can you discover about your competitors and their business? And by the way, you want to study other small businesses like yours, and I want you to look at the bigger companies with the big trucks all around town. Why do people call them? They still reach out to those bigger companies for a reason, and it's more than just all the money they have in advertising. Yes, they have bigger budgets for their marketing, but you need to stop making excuses about that and start learning. Most people want to go local, but there's a reason that they don't go local and they go with these big companies. Your mission is to find out why. If you take the best of all of your competitors, you're going to have an unfair advantage over all of the others, including those big companies from other areas. Right now you are starting from scratch, but all of these questions answered, you're going to have a leg up on what it's going to take to beat them all. You'll know exactly how to create the reputation that you want to create in your community. Now let's talk about another big area that you want to research when it comes to your competitors, and that is the products and the services that they carry and offer. In addition to learning what your future competitors do right in the marketplace, you need to study them also from a service and products perspective. What products and services are they offering? What products and services aren't they offering? Are there similarities to what you're planning to offer? Are there services you didn't even think of? How about any add-on products or services you haven't thought about either? Look for anything that confirms that you are on the right track and anything you might not have even thought of. Your main goal is to make sure you can be competitive and provide what folks are looking for. Now, word of caution, just because they offer everything in the kitchen sink doesn't mean that you need to offer everything in the kitchen sink. Your goal is to find out what is their most popular stuff that they're making money on and that they're doing business with. I don't want you chasing all the little baby stuff they do because that's not going to help you out. Keep in mind, sometimes people also don't offer a product or service because they've already learned that it isn't profitable. So don't assume it is and you need all of a sudden offer that one thing. You need to do your research and ask how you can make it profitable because obviously they couldn't, so they chose not to do it. By the way, a need isn't something you might sell or do once or twice a month. You need products and services that you can sell on a regular basis, especially in the beginning. Later, you can offer those unique things like we were talking about. Let your competition have those horrible items and those horrible services that rarely sell in the beginning. You need to think bread and butter or be very specialized on a very consistent basis. Now, an important note, do not carry inventory you do not need or rarely sell. All you do is tie up your cash that you could be using to purchase more stuff that you need to be able to grow your business and or hire people. Better yet, your profits can be reinvested back into your company or even in your take-home pay. Now, another area that you want to take a look at is what types of materials are they using? Are they using top-notch products or poor quality products? Is there a standard your customers are going to be expecting? Is there an opportunity for you to take it up a level? But whatever you do, don't sacrifice quality to save money. But then again, don't go crazy and go way overboard with what you do either. You need to find the balance by doing your research. Now, before we move on to pricing, there's one more area that crosses into both of the categories. Is there a niche that you can carve out, something that you can become a specialist in and stand out over your competition? Maybe this niche is a certain product or a certain service that you can offer at a great price over your competition. And we will talk about this more in another episode. I just want to start planting that seed for you. Now, let's talk about what they charge for their products or services. What is your competition charging customers for their products and services? How can they charge that price? Are they overpriced, underpriced? Can you determine what their profit margin is on the products or services that they even sell? Keep in mind, the bigger the competitor, 
the better purchasing power that they have because they can buy in bulk and buy a lot more. Don't get discouraged when you find out that they can buy materials cheaper than you can. These people can go straight to the wholesaler and get good discounts. You're not at that level yet, but keep in mind they weren't either when they started out. Later, we will have an episode on how you can set your prices, but it all starts with studying what your competition is charging so you at least have a baseline. Please remember, though, it all comes down to service and quality of work. These two things must always remain top notch to get the best price. I don't want you to be the cheapest, but I want you to understand what the competition charges and what do customers get for that price. This is very important information that you will use when you're setting your prices. I want you to be competitive, but I don't want you to give away the farm either. Another area of your competition that you need to study is going to be their marketing. How do they market their business to the community? For example, do they have a website? If so, what do they include in their services or products? How can you ensure you match or improve on theirs? Are they communicating to their customers what their business has to offer? Do you have a way to research the business? Can you learn more about them? Is there an easy way to contact them? A word of caution. If a competitor has high-tech website, do not try and match them out the gate. Some are all flash and no sales, and if they are successful, the odds are it took them years to get that website right and thousands of dollars unless they themselves are good at making websites. Or maybe they have a kid who did it for them. Either way, I don't want you to get hung up on yours needs to be the best looking website out there. I want you to focus on the key items that your website needs to include, like what do you have to offer, what services you have, how to get a hold of you, and I need you to make a plan. This way, you know what you need in the beginning, and then you can create a plan to improve over time. Customers want to know what it is that you do, when you can do it, and how to get a hold of you. Don't overthink this part. The most basic of website can get across the information that the customer needs. Remember, they have a pain point at the moment and they want to find out, can you take care of that pain point? Now, we will do an episode on your website later in the series, so hang in there. Do they also have a Facebook page? If so, how many likes do they have? Do they engage with their fans? What type of posts do they do? Can you get in any ideas? Now, it really isn't about the Facebook page. They really don't do anything anymore and they don't show up in their feeds. It's just letting you know, do they use their Facebook page as their main page for their business? Some people do not have a website. What they use is they use the Facebook page as that website. Everything, when you click it, will take you to the Facebook page. It just serves as a landing page, if you will, to answer those three questions that I mentioned earlier. The people that use Facebook the best are involved in their community pages where they're talking to people and showing their value. And we'll talk about that later as well. I want you to go to Google because this is going to be the most important thing that you can do in your business. And I want you to type in the type of business that you have into your town and see who pops up when you Google them. Who are the people that are the big players? You don't need to be number one, but you need to be in those top three. Who is showing up in those top three? And by the way, you might want to do this in the incognito tab so it doesn't get skewed by what you personally always research, which is what it will do. To get an unbiased look, you need to be incognito. Google is where people go. When they are in pain, they automatically go to Google and start searching. You need to know who are your competitors that are showing up so that way you can get up there better. And yes, we will talk about this more later. But I need you to also make a note that I want you to go searching around in all kinds of websites. I want you to know that you're going to need to claim your business on not only Google and Bing and Yahoo, but there's a lot of other websites that might be tied to your particular business. And these are the ones that you typically see with the little gray person and you can fill them in. I know I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but it's really important that you get this online piece correct because that is how people are going to find you 99% of the time. And since this episode is all about your competition, I need you to start studying what your competitors are doing right online so that way you can make some notes. Do they show up everywhere? Are they consistent? Are there certain ones that show up no matter where you go? Do they post more than just their information? Do they have pictures? Do they have stories? Do they have blog posts? What is it that they're doing? Remember, most of the online stuff is free. That's free stuff you can do to promote your business. So why not go out there and find out what your best competitors are doing so this way you can take advantage of it. Now, as part of marketing, you also want to understand how they market in the community. Do they do flyers, postcards, car decals, newspapers, truck wraps? Do they sponsor teams? What are you finding out? 
What ideas are starting to pop in your head? Write them down. Be creative. Think outside of the box, especially if you can find the cheapest ways to do it. That doesn't mean I want you spending money right away, but I need you to create a log of what your competitors are doing. So this way, when you finally do have money to spend on your marketing, you know exactly what seems to be working for them. Now, another area that I want you to research on your competition is going to be their reputation in the community. We've touched on this a little bit earlier, but please don't underestimate how informative this one step is going to be. You want to know what the community is saying about them. For example, do they do great work, but they have horrible service? Do they show up on time? Don't underestimate this one. Being late bothers customers tremendously as it is a sign of lack of respect for your customer's time. Other things to keep an ear out for is, do they show up dirty and rude? Is the business owner also considered rude? Are they known to have terrible communication and never call people back? If someone has money in their hand and can't get a hold of you, it is very frustrating. And what a great opportunity for you if your competition has this particular problem. Remember, all of these are areas that you can leverage to grow and develop your new business. And after researching your competitors' reputations, you can start forming what type of reputation you plan to have in your particular business. How are you going to take your competitors' weaknesses and leverage them? For example, let's use the fact that they are late. How could you leverage this to your advantage? How about creating a catchy promo about you being on time? You could waive your service fee if you are late, or maybe they get a free add-on of something when you're late. Make it fun and have a challenge that's going to help keep you to your word. Another way you can stand out is to offer a two-hour window if your competitors only offer four. Think about how much we all hate waiting those four hours for the cable guy. Folks will pick you if they think they have a shorter wait. And don't forget, don't focus just on their negative reputation items, but also their strengths, because this is going to help you stand out against them. It's easy to beat somebody who's doing things wrong. When somebody sucks at something, let's face it, it's not a high bar. Okay, I know this has been one of our longer episodes, but it's important you don't skip this research step. Take the time needed to know what you are going up against. You will save yourself lots of time by not having to learn the hard way. When you go into anything blind, you fall down a lot. But when you fall down, you cost yourself money. Do you really think that you can afford to spend your first year losing a lot of money? Or would you rather maximize your sales and profits out the gate by just spending a day or two learning all you can up front? Don't be foolish. Just do it. Remember, you need to know the good, the bad, and the ugly. You want to mirror or exceed the strengths and leverage the opportunities that you can find out there with your competitors. How are you going to stand out? Research is going to give you a tremendous advantage over those already in business. They have already paved the way. All you have to do is research their business and get the answers that are going to help you open a very strong business. You just have to do it. Now, in our next episode, we're going to take a look at all the other things that you need to research in order to prepare for your success. So get out that pen and paper and start doing your research. Now, before you leave, don't forget to grab your free startup guide from the show notes and download all the previous episodes if you haven't watched them already. And don't forget to join me over at the Badass Business Owner Podcast and sign up for the YouTube channel for even more tips, tools, and videos and best practices for your new small business. With that, I will see you on the next episode. Bye for now.